everybody hopefully all of you are doing well i've had requests to do a mashed potato recipe for a while now and although i already had one i wanted to do a few more so i'm not just bringing you one recipe but three today that you can actually use wherever you see fit first up we're going to be making my fully loaded cheese and bacon mashed potatoes and then we're going to make my vegan mashed potatoes with a vegan pesto and finally my herb purple mashed potatoes let's get started to start these mashed potatoes off right, I washed all of the potatoes individually in the sink. If you have a vegetable scrubber, that's great, but you do wanna make sure all of the dirt and dust have been removed from the potatoes. I like to leave some of the skin on all of the potatoes because I like the texture. You can peel all of the skin off if you choose to. Those purple potatoes, those are petite purple potatoes, and I did leave some of the skin on those also. If you can find the bigger ones, use those because they are easier to peel. I cut the potatoes about a half inch in size. Whatever size you cut the potatoes, you wanna make sure they are all the same size because that's going to allow for even cooking. So just be aware of that. Don't um, have potatoes in there that are different sizes because what's gonna happen is you're gonna have some cooking longer than others and some will be done and some won't. So just try to keep them all the same size. Once I've cut up all of the potatoes, I'm gonna put them in a pot with some cold running water, and I'm gonna let the water come up about two inches above the potatoes. The purpose of using cold water and not hot is because you want the cold water and the potato to come up to a boil together. They heat up together, again, for even cooking. In the meantime, I went ahead and made my homemade pesto, vegan pesto for the recipe. Um, I do have a regular pesto recipe. The only difference between vegan and regular pesto is our vegan version does not have Parmesan cheese. So the recipe will be attached. You can make your own or you can purchase your own pesto in the stores if you like. So all of our potatoes have come up to a boil and now they are fork tender. They should pierce very easily with a fork. And then I'm just gonna drain them in the sink in a colander and make sure you shake off all of the excess water. Then we're gonna put them back into the pot and then we're gonna move the pot back to the stove. Reason being, we want all of the excess water. If there's any left, we need it to evaporate. The heat from the pot should help that happen. If you notice, I do have the stove turned off. So, you know, if your potatoes are extra wet, you could turn it on low for like a minute or two just to get that water out. But the potatoes were pretty dry. If you drain them, you should be fine. We're gonna be using a tool that I've always wanted. I'm using a potato ricer. You can find these in the kitchen supply stores. You can find them online. I had been looking for one that was all stainless steel. Um, it breaks down into two pieces for easy cleaning. And it's called a potato ricer because when you push the potato through, it looks like rice. Um, it also mimics a garlic press, if you will. If you guys wanna know what it's really like, it looks like a big garlic press. You put the potato inside, and then you just move the lever down and you have very smooth potatoes come um, out of the other end. If you leave the skin on the potatoes like I did, the skin will get caught up inside and just use a spatula or a spoon to take it out. And I just put it in the bowl because once again, I like the texture of the skin. Since I'm gonna be linking this particular potato ricer down below, I want you to see this screw. Um, this screw removes very easily so that the ricer breaks down in two pieces so you can clean it don't lose that because it holds the device together so i'm just showing you that so if that happens to you or if it comes apart just slip it right back in it's really easy to use these are the golden potatoes which are going to be our fully loaded potato mashed potato dish and i got some melted butter i've got um, sour cream i've got some hot milk and i'm using hot and room temperature ingredients because i want to keep the temperature of the potatoes up if you use cold milk you're going to bring the temperatures of your potato down and that's kind of not what you want okay because i'm going to put this product in the oven anyway i might as well keep it hot i also have a whole head of roasted garlic lots of seasoning taste these potatoes before you add all of the other ingredients because you want to make sure your potatoes are nice and seasoned for the exact measurements to all three of these recipes, be sure and check out gdseasoning.com. The link will be in the description below and pinned in the comments. So these are just some of the ingredients that I pulled from the fridge. I got lots of um, cooked bacon. I got some cheese, green onions, and then this jalapeno that I was like, yeah, let's add it in because I had it in the fridge, right? Then I was like, wait, no. Wait, who's going to eat these potatoes? Never mind. So I left them out. Be sure and add some in if you want to. <laughs> I stirred in half of the ingredients into the potatoes, and then I'm going to top it with the leftover cheese and bacon on top. 
and we're going to leave the onions off. Um, we're going to put those on when it comes out of the oven. I put the potatoes in a 400 degree oven just until they were hot through and through and the cheese was nice and melted. So you can play that by ear about 15, 20 minutes, not very long at all. All right, so moving on to our vegan mashed potatoes with our vegan pesto. I have some roasted garlic, lots of seasoning with our red skin potatoes and some of the skin is left also on these potatoes. And I use the ricer, no butter, or you can use some vegan butter. And the broth I'm using is a vegetable broth. Of course, vegetable broth, you know, has tomato in it, which is the reason for the color. Dealing with all of these potatoes at the same time, I had to remember that you have some potatoes that are higher in moisture and low in starch or higher in starch and low in moisture, and some are just kind of waxy. Because of the texture that the red potato has, they're a little bit more waxy, they actually call for more liquid. So I ended up using just over two cups of the vegetable stock to get them to their creamy texture. Lastly, I'm just gonna top the red potatoes with some pesto. Y'all like how I just ran right in and gave you a vegan recipe right in the middle of the other two? <laughs> I think about my vegans too. So I'm just going to chop up some fresh herbs. I have some fresh rosemary, fresh thyme, and fresh parsley, about two tablespoons of each. And now my purple potatoes are all done. I just boiled those whole. Uh, they were so small, there was really no need to cut them. Drained them, made sure they were nice and dry, and then I have them in a bowl. And I, this time I'm just using a regular potato masher. In goes some sour cream. Also, I'm going to put some melted butter. And I have chicken stock and some um, hot milk uh, off to the side because I was trying to decide whether I was going to use half a cup of each. What I ended up doing was actually just adding a whole cup or a little bit more of the milk. Just eased it in and just smashed the potatoes as I went along. And uh, using all of that dairy is going to bring those purple potatoes up to a nice lilac color. I added all of my seasonings to taste and then I almost forgot to add all of my fresh herbs. For those of you who want to use dried herbs instead of fresh, just remember dried herbs are stronger so you're going to go with half of the measurement. This is some footage that I didn't use from a previous video but I'm showing you here how I'm taking the dried herbs and I'm mixing them into the hot chicken stock or you can do this with the milk or half and half also. As long as it's warm, it's going to rehydrate those dried herbs and that way they won't be crunchy when you put them in the mashed potatoes. And that's it. Those are our herbed purple mashed potatoes. Now it's time for some viewer shout outs. This is when you guys make my recipes and then you send me pictures so that I can give you a shout out. Candace Thompson made my crock pot macaroni and cheese. She sent this to me via Facebook. She did an excellent job. Brenda Reynolds and her baby girl who's shown here, they said they love to make my chocolate cream cheese pound cake and it's one of their favorites. Now, because I'm nosy and I want to see what you guys are cooking when you make my recipes, send me photos at Cook with Carolyn via Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Thank you guys so much for joining me. You know I appreciate it when you come cook with me and hang out. Don't forget this recipe and others can be found at gdseasoning.com. And I'll see you next time.